Hello, we're going to talk about two actually, well, relatively different laws, but I've grouped them together because they're both about using computers in a way you shouldn't use them. The first law is about individual people and the second law is about really governments. But like I said, they're both about not really doing what you should be doing. So the first law, which like I say applies to individuals, is the Computer Misuse Act, which is quite old now. It was first enacted back in 1990. It's quite controversial that it's so old. Now all this law does is punish hacking and also creating malware. So those are the two big things this law is trying to stop. And it's controversial partly because back in 1990, hackers and malware creators were very different to what they are right now. You know, it's much more advanced now than it was back 30 years ago. So this law, as it currently stands, makes it illegal to do the following things. First of all, it's illegal to access computer systems without permission. And this can be something really simple as guessing somebody's password, well that is technically accessing a system without permission. If a computer is already lo logged on and you walk over to it and use it, that's not necessarily the same thing, it's about you actually accessing it. So more advanced hacking might be finding a bug in the software and trying to get a backdoor into your system, but if you haven't got permission, this is illegal. Interestingly, this law also has kind of a follow-on more serious charge, which is if you're using a computer with the aim of committing other crimes. So using a computer to commit other crimes makes the offence more serious. So for instance, you might hack into it to steal some data and commit identity theft, where you use somebody else's bank details, say, to buy loads of things. That'd be more serious under this law because you're committing another crime in accessing the computer. And also, the form which covers malware most specifically is impairing the computer system. If you are impairing something, you are causing it to not work as well as it should, it might not even work at all, or damaging it in other words. And so, often malware does this, right? Malware might really slow down the computer, a virus might go in and delete some important files which cause the computer to not really work properly that is causing issues on the computer and again this law makes that illegal. Now this is one of the few laws in the ones I've talked about which the police actually will definitely enforce or they're meant to enforce it. A lot of the other laws like the Data Protection Act are covered by other agencies but the police are in charge of this law and it can lead to prison sentences, not always particularly long prison sentences but that's what this law can lead to if you break it. So this is all about individual people, it's not about organisations. So please don't get this mixed up with the Data Protection Act, which is sort of kind of the counterpart about defending against these attackers. Right, our second law, which again, I don't want you to get mixed up. Um, I'm only grouping it because both laws are about, like I've said a couple of times, people using computers in the wrong way. This one is about government, really not about individual people. It's REPA, which came into effect in 2000. REPA stands for Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act, which sounds quite vague. This only applies to certain public authorities, so certain government agencies, the most obvious being the police and also the intelligence agencies. This is a picture of the headquarters of GCHQ, which is the government's cybersecurity intelligence agency, a bit like MI5, MI6, but for security. So it's not just any, you know, a school shouldn't be doing this, but it's, it's mostly law enforcement. Now this law allows these authorities to carry out surveillance in the interests of national security as long as a judge approves. So let's unpack that a little bit. Surveillance is where you are looking, spying on people, trying to see what's going on, often listening in to their communications. National security is where it really affects all of our safety. So it must be quite serious. You can't just use this law for low-level crimes. And the last part about a judge approving, it means the police or GCHQ have to go to a court and argue why this is so important, why it's going to help national security. So they can't just do this straight away. It takes a few steps. So a couple of examples of things they might be able to do under this law. So for example, if the police suspected there was a terrorist, 
they might go to a judge and ask to bug their house. A bug is a really small listening device which they might hide and try and listen in on their conversations. Another thing covered by this law is use of undercover police officers. So you can't really deploy these to spawn people to follow people around unless you've been approved under this law. And another interesting point which applies to not government agencies but private companies, well, internet service providers, ISPs, like Virgin Media, Sky, BT, EE, may also be told, forced, to hand over certain sensitive information about people suspected of serious crimes. So we might give over your internet history if a judge approves that. So this is a very controversial law because nobody likes getting spied on and we would hope most of us aren't, but in a really serious case, the government are allowed to do certain more extreme actions as long as a judge approves. And that is what Reaper legislates for.